Garrett here from Garden First Cannabis. I'm a grower, a music junkie, and an avid outdoorsman. I'm always looking for new ways to better myself and my garden. Join me as we go behind the scenes to meet the incredible people behind today's most successful cannabis brands and hear the stories of their journey. This is Deep Roots. Project, um, getting ready to film our uh, our lunch scene with the folks over at Apothecare. I was super excited to get to add a little craft beer into this tour. I mean, I'm a cannabis connoisseur, but uh, going to college in Fort Collins, I got to spend a lot of time at a lot of really amazing breweries. I feel like there's a lot of parallels between craft beer and craft cannabis. There's a lot that these industries can learn from each other. So Rex, head brewer here at the Ferndale Project. Uh, tell me what uh, what you guys are working on today. So here at Ferndale Project, um, we are the experimental arm of the Eastern Market Brewing Company in Detroit. So we're located in Ferndale. So over here we do experimental IPAs, heavily fruited sours, and we'll do some barrel aged stouts. And we're here to be experimental, crazy, do out of the box type of stuff. I love going on brewery tours, seeing the science behind it. You could take me on a tour back there, that'd be awesome. Yeah, absolutely, man, love to. Here at Ferndale Project, getting ready to go check out uh, the Apothecare Grow. Thank you guys for having me. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. So, what's uh, what's everyone's association with um, with Apothecare? My name is Gina. I'm the sales manager. I was also the number one employee, so I've been <laughs> with this company for since they've been open. Did you have a background in sales? I do, yeah. I worked for a multi state operator before joining Apothecare. Okay. So, and I was the sales manager for them and helped them launch in the market. Sweet. Well, what about you? So, I'm, a, I guess, one of the biggest buyers of, of Apothecare yeah. in the state, or the biggest buyer. Um, so, I'm part of New Standard. So, the organic factor is great, but it holds its own with everything else terpene profile, THC percentage. Oh, looks like we got some food coming in. All right. Sorry about that, folks. No worries. All you guys sell weed, but I mean, I assume someone at this table actually grows it. <laughs> it is I. I'm the cultivator at Apothecare, um, and I kind of stumbled upon the company when I first moved to Michigan. Like, gosh, I think I just had my year anniversary. I just came here from the West Coast and was like, I have pretty much no interest in working anywhere other than in organics. They accepted me into their family. Oh, that's delicious. Yeah, yeah. The mango, my mango sauce. I did not think it was gonna taste like that from the color. No, it was fire. Wow. <laughs> it's a little fire. <laughs> <laughs> what got you so excited about doing organics and living soil and? It's kind of like been a journey, honestly, because everything that I've been involved in in the past has been outside. <laughs> so taking any bit of knowledge that I've gathered from that and just like trying to transfer that into like an indoor setting and especially at the scale that we're at, no one else in the state is doing that right now. It's just, I'm loyal to the soil, my guy. You know, <laughs> like, it's like, <laughs> how, I, how can you not be? It's, we're, we're literally cultivating medicine for people, right? right? And there's like that whole wave of organic foods right. and nutrition and people being super concentrated on like, hey, what are we putting into our bodies? How is our food being grown? That's, we're ingesting that. We're doing the same thing with cannabis. What's the saying from Gladiator? <laughs> <laughs> from dust from we dust. came and dust we shall return. Yes. Something like that. From living soil we came and from living soil we shall yes, return. Exactly, <laughs> yes. It's gospel, it's gospel, you know what I mean? The cannabis industry does create a lot of waste and that's yeah. something that's really cool to be involved in something like, you know, a project like this is because we're being very mindful and thoughtful just all the way through from not only the cultivation but 
you know, through the production and packaging, biodegradable, yeah. eco-friendly, you know, or that are using ingredients that are right. uh, vegan-friendly, gluten-free. I always talk about this like wook to suit ratio. Yeah, <laughs> it's a conversation you have that I have with people. You ratio. have to have a proper wook to suit ratio in order to really thrive in yeah. the cannabis industry because there are so many different kinds of people that you have to talk to and scenarios that you have to navigate through, you know, and I've got just about everybody's wook suit ratio dialed in. Okay, I've, I've almost got it down to a science. <laughs> it's, is it like a one to 10? Like, no, no, so <laughs> it's percentages. I'm, it's percentage, okay. I would like to say that I'm a 60, 40 suit to wook ratio. Mal here is probably like 85, 15 suit to wook. I picked up on that. And then uh, Leah, I would probably say she's like 50, 50. No way, her wook like, ratio is way higher. Yo, she's 40, 60 <laughs> whoop to suit. You call me a fucking suit? Or, no, I'm sorry. She's got I, a Wu Tang shirt on. <laughs> we'll give her a 30, 70. Thank you. 20. Suit to whoop. 20, 20, 80? Okay, 20, 80. Yeah. What's, What's my ratio? Oh, right, we Straight have to. Up. Get, honestly, let's get to the bottom of this. I'd say I'm probably, I'm probably 65, 35. Okay. Leaning look. Leaning look. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. I mean, I. Uh, you know. Yeah, dude, you had your steely stand socks. I had my steely stand socks on, you know. All right. All when right. we first met, COVID was a COVID was more of a suit year. Yeah. Uh, but man, the last two months, the ratio is shifting drastically fast. <laughs> <laughs> Settling I feel right that. Back I feel in. that. Yeah. Paul. Hey Garrett, how are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you for having me, man. So we're in the mother room at the Apothecary facility. I see mothers of all different sizes, all different pot sizes throughout this. What's the organization here? So we have about 47 mothers in here right now. It is about 25 different cultivars and how we line them up is by flowering rooms. Well, I know you guys have an R&D room uh, beyond your main production flower mm -hmm. rooms. So when you're looking for those 20, 25 strains to run, how do you how do you hunt for that? What do you look for? Do you work with any breeders? Do you guys breed yourself? We uh, work with some breeders, uh, Fresh Coast. They're here in Michigan. We've started a few things from seed from them. We've started a few things from cut from them. Gorilla butter, white truffle cut, truffle butter, butter face. Seems to be a lot of butters they have Buttery. there. Um, Dual OG is one that we've been running recently that we're just loving it you know we're getting like high 20s up to 30 percent thc with it it's yielding great for us so that's kind of one that is moved into like our mainstays beyond the the living organics that you guys are running here something unique about this facility is that your leds the whole way through mm -hmm. these ones we got above us how has your experience been working with these these science leds well, they're great, you know, like we can adjust the spectrum. So these lights in here are the same ones that we're using in the flowering room. But in here, we're just dropping out the red and we're dropping out like the orangish kind of tint to give it more just that veg look of like a blue or, you know, light in here. Well, I know one of the big things that can push people away from the investment in LED is that it's a lot more upfront. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, in the long run, it always pays off. Yep. Energy savings, not having to replace bulbs, uh, not having to run as much HVAC. What's been your experience with, with these units? Well, it's also great that like, if you're running HPSs in your spring in your room, you could worry about oh, a water droplet hit in your bulb and poof, blown up. But with these, they have a lens on the bottom of them that I believe it's IP67, and you could just spray a hose on them, drop them in a pool if you wanted, and they're still gonna be working just fine. Well, I've been learning a lot from you already, Paul, but I think the guys from Science LED are actually over here. So I'm, uh, I'm gonna go over and nerd out with them and find out more about how this technology works. Cool, sounds good. It's the grow spot, guys. Well, so I know Brent was being a goofball over there. In all seriousness, you know what makes your guys' LEDs different than others where you can actually get the penetration into the, into the canopy? Yeah, sure. So what you're looking at in here are 120-degree optics. 
Those have a tendency to spread the photons out a little better, kind of drive them down into the canopy. Um, the light coming in at those angles, that's when we're getting down to the lower parts of the plants a little better. So uh, the guys at Apothecary, you know, they're running living soil. It's a super low input, low waste system, and obviously LEDs kind of align with that. Uh, have you had to do anything to tailor uh, how they work to this type of model? Yeah, sure. So Apothecare, they have a, a really specific model to them, uh, really low input, the living soil system. So their needs are going to be a little bit different than a high input, faster grow. So being able to sh tune these lights to their needs and get the plants to grow at their rate with their soil mix has been really key in getting success over here. What's the biggest difference between the models? Is it, because um, I know the spectrum you can dial it in. So is it just, uh, is it wattage, is it heat output? Yeah, you know, it's mostly grow style. All the lights are pretty similar as far as spectrum adjustments, but what you really need for your application is kind of what fixture you're gonna pick. So with these Dragon SLs, the Dragon Alphas, you're looking at high bay, HPS style replacements. Um, if you're looking at the Raging Kush, the three bar unit, that's going to be those lower, closer uh, applications. And then the Raging Kale is our veg light, so that's strictly made for vegetative growth. I know you're telling me that basically you guys are able to dial in both the spectrum and the intensity of, of all the models. How do you go about doing that? So there's an app on the phone uh, that you can use. It's a, an easy app to change and set all your schedules up, change the recipes, um, and control all of your lights and groups. We also have a web-based model that you can control from the computer top and then we link into any grow room control systems that can control the lights as well. What's the spread that you get on one of these lights? Is it basically like one-to-one -to, -one to an HPS? Not exactly one-to-one. -one. With the lenses it changes the throw of the lights a little bit. Okay cool so uh, this kind of spread is, is more for the moms in flower it might be stacked two three times as many. In the same yeah spread. you'll notice them a little closer together in the flower rooms a little higher PPFD really getting that penetration down in the canopy. With the spectrum tuning we can really let these plants kind of come into their own morphologically. Uh, we can control you know how much stress we're getting between the inner nodes we can really make the plant express what we want it to express you know a little more anthocyanin production um, different leaf sizes pulling out those petioles we've seen some of these spectrums even affect how easy it is to trim the plant so it brings cultivars back in that you may have gotten rid of well i appreciate you taking the time with me today man um, feel free to send me some lights and help me find my g-spot back in oregon uh, and it was great meeting you it's great meeting you too we'll get you all dialed in man Hey guys, oh sorry, I got bush in my face. The grow spot, it's over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got bush and grow spot now. First thing I noticed walking in here was your racking systems. I mean, I've seen this in a lot of hydro gardens, but this is my first experience in a commercial true living organic facility. So how'd you guys land on this as the, as the design and what, what were the differences in designing a facility for, for this type of cultivation style versus say hydro? Yeah, for here, we wanted to save a lot of space and we figured we could use this racking system, but only in our bedroom. So, you know, we have the top level up there where we start our plants, you know, right fresh out of clones. They come into there, go up there, and then the bottom level is for stuff that's about a week to two weeks in. Once the stuff on the bottom level goes out of here to the flowering rooms, the top level comes down, and every two weeks we're just moving and moving and moving. What was your background before coming on with Apothecare? I mean, had, had you been running organics before? Is that kind of where your expertise lies? I had been doing just hydroponics about five years ago. I lived in Chicago at the time, and I'd met a partner, one of my partners now, and he had some of these caregiver girls up here in Michigan, and I started coming up here from Chicago. Once I got here, I kind of just dove completely into it. And then we came upon this project. And at the time, I'm just like, well, I don't know anything about <laughs> organic living soil, you know, but sure, I'm going to use like what I've kind of learned from this hydroponic world on like a smaller scale to do it in a living organic facility. So obviously, once you're in flower, right, that soil is getting reused. Mm -hmm. you're, you're building total environment of microbes, worms, cover crops, all that, but obviously you can't really do that in veg. Yeah. So what goes into the, to the mixture and the recipe to build your organic soil for veg? So this is already pre-made soil that we get from a company called Tilt Soil. We just have that. We repot these in straight water for three weeks until they go to flower and they're fine. So really don't have to add any other nutrients into these and just open up these yards and start digging in. 
So you're literally able to, there's, there's enough in the soil that you're just able to feed straight water, no compost teas or anything like that to move the process mm -hmm. along, just pH water? Yep. I know one of the toughest parts of running a, a true living organic system is uh, in the fact that you've got soil beds that are never leaving your facility and inevitably that's gonna leave, lead to a lot more pest pressure. So what measures do you guys take to manage that and keep populations at bay? So we got this brand new unit called a Nutrifogger and this thing's crazy. You have this little pouch and you fill the proprietary wetting agent in there with whatever you kind of need to kill the bugs and you mix this in there, heat the unit up and then you just press the button and 30 seconds it just covers your whole room in fog. Um, this fog you can let sit in there for about an hour uh, and it's just gonna attack any mildew, mold, pests that you have on the plants. And this takes about 30 seconds to get the whole room done. And not only are we saving time on labor, there's a huge cost savings with it. So beyond cost savings, time savings, do you feel like you're getting better coverage out of this versus a spray? Oh, for sure. You know, you go through a room and you're spraying, you're missing spots, you're going under the plants and you're not getting that one, you're probably getting this one. With the Nutrifogger, like, we're getting full coverage of the whole room, under every leaf, on top of every leaf, under the bed. How fine does that mist get? It says it gets one micron, so that's gonna cover everywhere in the room. Sanitize the air, the plants. Well, Paul, thank you for showing me around veg. Uh, it's been great hearing your story of learning with trial by fire, True Living Organics. Uh, I'm excited to go check out you know, what what a big true living organic soil bed really looks like in flower. So Yeah, let's take you off to Leah and see the flowering rooms. I got in a random limousine to Red Rocks. So basically my roommate knew these people through his class. I was going, I had tickets to this Red Rock show. It's like, I want to see more of this like jam grass music. And my roommate at the time was like, oh, like my girlfriend's in this class with this person and like they're going to the show and they have a limousine going, like if you want to go with them and have a ride. So I'm like, cool, yeah, that'd be great. Um, you know, I want to see the show and I don't have anybody to go with. So, and so I get in the limo and uh, I end up meeting people that are today my closest friends in the world that still live in Oregon with me, most of them. Leah, thank you for having me in here. I'm excited to literally dig in to, you know, the heart and soul of this operation, uh, these living soil beds. Yeah, dude, it's good to have you guys here. Well, I mean, these are the biggest indoor living soil beds I've ever seen in my life, and you've got four rooms full of these. Is, is there anybody else in Michigan doing it like you? You know, uh, come to think of it, I'm not sure that anyone else in the state is doing it um, at this scale indoor. So that is something that we're kind of pioneering. What strains do we have in the room right now? So we've got, this is the beautiful Mac plant that everyone is Can't so fond of. Um, we've got some Mob Boss over here and we've got some Lemon Aldron and I believe that is the Garlic Snake Breath over there. How did you design the system of the soil? So essentially like n none of the soil in this bed ever leaves and every round we will Actually, we work with a company called Tilth out of Cleveland, um, and we also work with an agronomist. And we only amend based off of what the soil is asking for. So we'll test the existing soil in our beds, send that out to our agronomist, and then those results get sent. And he crafts us a top dress, essentially, that kind of re-amends all of these beds in here. And then we'll go through and put down our cover crop seed, um, which we use predominantly alfalfa and buckwheat. Okay. Um, and the reason that we've chosen those is because alfalfa is a nitrogen fixer. Right. And buckwheat is actually a phosphorus. Well, so I see a lot of different types of insects in your soil, um, some centipedes, some worms that are breaking stuff down. I mean, honestly, the soil looks like half worm shit, uh, yeah. to be honest. But. Uh, <laughs> 
Beyond uh, soil dwelling insects, are you using anything um, as predators to kind of keep uh, populations at bay in here? Yeah, uh, so we're working with BioBest uh, with our beneficials. Um, we've got, you can kind of see here, the Swirsky breeding system, the sachets that are uh, on the plants here. And we utilize the cucumerous system as well. And uh, we do really like the lace wings. Yeah. And we actually just got the pirate bugs, the Aureus insidious, um, back in the fleet as well. I can imagine with a lot of soil, a lot of moisture in here, significantly less cooling than an HPS setup, uh, there's probably some tweaks you have to do to the environment to get mm -hmm. uh, to get what you're looking for. Yeah, in terms of our dehumidification, uh, we actually have been rocking the Quest dehues in here, and those have served us really well. Uh, it's an American-made company. I've been seeing them throughout your entire facility. I saw the cutest, most adorable little Quest I've ever seen in your guys' trim room. Um, I didn't even know they made them that small. Well, Leah, thank you so much again for showing me around, teaching me about what you guys do with Living Soil. Uh, your passion is inspiring, and uh, I'm just so excited to see you guys continue to uh, be more and more successful with this model. Yeah, dude, it's been incredible having you guys here. Thank you. So Paul, um, we're in uh, one of your smaller flower rooms that's uh, just for R&D. Yep. Um, what, what are you usually using this for? Is it strain trials, light trials? Like, what, do you, what are you hunting to try to perfect in here? A lot of the times we're just, any new strain is going into this room first. Nowadays we're getting a little craftier and just trying various different growing styles in here. Let's try to super crop one side and the other side, we're just gonna be using the scrogging method with the trellis. And then once we harvest this room, we're gonna take the wet weight and kind of weigh it all out for each individual cultivar and see, are we getting a bigger yield from super cropping or a bigger yield from just letting the plants go on their own? Do you kind of use this as a, a proving bay for equipment? Yeah, you know, like we have the science lights we've touched on a little bit, like we could mess around with various uh, spectrums going on in here. We also uh, got a new Quest unit in the room that is right above us up here. It is a Quest 335, and we are the only ones in the world that have this right now. Wow. So we're kind of running tests with it, see how efficient it is. They say it's nine pints per kilowatt hour, which is just blowing away every other unit in the industry. It hangs like a 506. There's a lot of other things that I'm liking about it. There's a digital onboard humistat, humidistat, which doesn't exist on any of the other quests out there right now. It's funny that dehumidifiers are really what excites me. Yeah. <laughs> well, sweet. It's been uh, cool seeing these trials, but let's go take a look at the rest of the facility. Cool. Gina, Jack, we've got a beautiful spread here. Jackson, right around here. This is where all the weed is grown. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it sounds like you're working with uh, with Jack over here for processing. So where are we sending it, and how is that relationship been going for you guys? We take all of their organically cultivated biomass and we extract it and we are up in northern Michigan. It'll either go into the edible line, it'll go into concentrates. So we've got the bespoke line here. We have the citrus flow. This is like our uplifting blend. Uh, this is a 10 to 1 THC uh, to THCV. Okay. Um, which THCV is a really great minor cannabinoid. Um, it's really good for uplifting, kind of appetite suppressant. Um, I also have the Strawberry Bliss. Um, this one's more of a balanced blend of THC and CBD. It's a one-to-one -one, uh, ratio product. Um, and then we have our Relaxing Blend. It's a two to two to one. <laughs> so uh, THC to CBD to CBN okay. ratio. All right, so I mean, I know CBN, right, sedative. Um, CBD, obviously, anti-inflammatory, fucking in everything now, <laughs> you know? Um, and obviously THC, but like, what, what is the impact that THCV has? Like, how is that derived and, and how does that impact the effect of the, the edible? And so naturally, THCV is found in a lot of the sativas and sativa dominant hybrids. It's something that has been largely unexplored in the regulated market. Well, um, I know I got about a dozen heads 
that uh, are going to be happy to you know taste test and quality test any of these products for you guys so you know, whatever you need us to take home just Absolutely. let us know How's it going, Chad? Good, how are you? Doing well, man, thank you for having me. I know you are the post-harvest guy here. How did you land uh, in this position at Apothecary? I actually came from a different facility here locally and uh, just had an opportunity here. Came here as a pre-roll runner, just running the machine, the knockbox. Got promoted to become the production manager. Oh, I see you got all the strains up on this one. Who drew this back over here, though? I actually did. You did? Yes. Nice, dude. Uh, actually, our creative director, Rachel, designed it and I put it on the wall and pieced it together. Well, I know there's a lot of care and a lot of thought put into every part of the process in the garden here. That perspective and that input translates over here to the post service side of things. What is your drying and curing process before coming in here? So once they harvest from the flower rooms, they bring it into the dry room on hangers, full plants, and they hang there for 10 days. I mean, you've got really, really beautiful nug structure on here. Uh, what strain is this? This is like ice cream cake. Ice cream cake? Okay, so that's a, that's a gelato wedding cake cross? I believe so. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the, the color's great, tread content's beautiful. Honestly, I'm impressed with uh, the overall bud size too, I mean, particularly for living organics. What I love about this system, right, is literally y'all have your soil beds, your cover crops, your amendments that you mix in, but it's literally just water and love. Going water and love, absolutely. 100%. And so, you know, you take that through the whole process, not just in cultivation, and you come in here, you know, that's, I assume that's why you chose hand trimming over machine trimming. Yep, absolutely. You can't get the quality that you can out of hand trimming that you will with machine, you know. Our trim bins that we use are from Harvest More. They're really good trim bins for the trimmers. They like them a lot. Comfort, it catches our key also, which we can use for processing. You can stack them, put them away. They're just a good overall brand. Well, thank you for your time today, Chad. It was great meeting you. I appreciate you coming I over. I love to uh, to see people like you and living their passion and bringing it every day. Welcome to Apothecary. Yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. Welcome to Apothecary. How's it going? Good. I'm Garrett. Angel, nice to meet you. Pleasure. I am Apothecarist here. That's what they call you guys, Apothecarist? Yep. <laughs> I like that. Instead of bud tenders. Compared to all the other dispensaries or farms or whoever you've worked for, uh, what's uh, you know what's the biggest difference with Apothecary? Um, the quality of the products, the fact that everything is organic and natural. There's no pesticides or nutrients used, so you can definitely tell the difference in taste right. and effect. It doesn't give you that foggy-minded right. feeling or just like droggy feeling. Even if you do like a high indica, it's just very, it's smooth. Smooth, balanced. From, from the hit to the effect. As far as this flower goes, um, let's get some smells going. Okay because I can't have you stick your nose uh -huh. in the jar. Keep it COVID safe, blow <laughs> yeah. the turps in my face. Yep. So this is Dual OG. It's a balanced um, testing at 29%. Oh my God, it works. Yeah. <sighs> Got that classic funky OG yeah. scent. That's beautiful too. Um, well, what's your favorite? Um, this would be one of them. And then Sunday Driver. So when we entered our first cup, we won with Sunday Driver. We got your gummies, some Sunday driver, and then some limoncello. There you go. Thank you, Angel. You're welcome. Appreciate nice you. To meet you. It was a pleasure. Well, we got quite a spread here, guys. We got a new guest here hanging out with us. So, I mean, I think first things first, we need to figure out Dylan's wook to suit ratio. <laughs> What's the analysis? So, ooh, um, so you definitely have to consider hobbies. Dylan has a pretty cool hobby. He makes 
cool tools, Dylan? Well, this is just a uh, grade two titanium that I blacksmith together um, with a uh, heat and a hammer and an anvil. So we got like whoop. <laughs> These are definitely points levels towards Levels are work. rising. Yeah, the levels are rising. Going up. He's also a heady grower. Heady organic grower. Wook points. And then also, I feel like we might need to break down what a wook is for the layman Ooh. out there. I think some people associate it with like people that get super wasted, you know, and like to go to like music festivals and, you know, aren't like the most responsible of people. Right. But being very cultured and, you know, being really involved in the music scene, being really involved in the cannabis scene. But they're also the same people that go to work. You know, they work right. really hard. What's your background in the cannabis industry? Uh, well, I started off like uh, mostly a lot of people like packaging, uh, trimming, and then I went more to the production side of things and worked there for uh, about two years. And then uh, I wanted a change in my work and I moved over to Apothecary and it was a great decision. I uh, went over to the garden in there. I've been at Apothecary for almost a year now. And he's a pretty hard worker, so he's gonna get some suit points for that. So he might be an 80-20 with Leah. What's your favorite type of music to see when you can find the time? House music. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the boots and the cats. I like, I like boots and cats. Mac Miller, it looks like. Yeah, I like Mac Miller. So they've been doing studies and they found that you have the ability, your body has the ability to create up to 30% more cannabinoid uh, receptors while you're engaging in a musical activity. So like singing or playing an instrument um, or even listening to music. And so they're, they're trying to do studies right now to see how closely related like cannabis really is with music and if it's actually like just something we're drawn to right. because we need to be drawn to it. Weed it's makes music better, things. but mu music actually wait, makes weed better yeah. too. Yeah, absolutely. They're both That's awesome. performance enhancing. When I get home to smoke, like I, the music has to be on, like in the right setting, like you gotta set the, set the space. It's, set the mood, yeah. yeah. Driving around Michigan these last uh, few days, it reminds me a lot of Oregon. Um, you know, it's just like lush and green and there's like rivers and lakes and everybody gets outside. You know, it's not even like a question. And there's just a, so much outdoor activity. Uh, I can see myself spending more time here for sure. So what do you think this cat's look to suit ratio is? <laughs> Ooh, he's, he looks oh. kind of mad. It's, um, I think he's a little more wook than we think he is. Oh, he's like <laughs> probably 80, honestly. Yeah. I mean, he chills, chills hard. Definitely doesn't work. No, no. job, yeah. you know. He doesn't have a company email address. He's a hundred percent. He baits himself with his tongue. Yeah, yeah I think he's a hundred percent wook. There's yeah. no way. Found it. The grow spot. All right, let's do it again. It's the grow spot. I found it. Serious come. All right, let's do it again. The grow spot. I just found it, guys. It's the grow spot. I just found it. Okay, let's do one more. It's the grow spot, guys. It's the grow spot, guys. There it is. I found the grow spot, guys. Probably too much. Maybe we'll go a little sooner. Uh, one more. Hey, it's the grow spot, guys. Here it is. Found the grow spot. All right. I think we got the walk here.